Hello friends and welcome back. Today's video is a full length tutorial. We're gonna be doing some pen and wash, which a lot of you have expressed an interest in. And it's gonna be the most adorable picture that I got from Pixabay of a little baby with his bear. If you want to join me, grab your paints and a waterproof pen and let's get started. By the way, my name is Emily, and here on my channel, we do art tutorials, product reviews, and we discuss all things watercolors. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button right now. Right here, I have my set of 18 colors. It's the palette I always have on my desk. If you wanna know more about the colors that I've chosen for my personal palette, check out this video. I also have a block of Fabriano Artistico 140 pound cotton cold pressed watercolor paper. It's five by seven inches. I have a Trakel size eight Protégé Synthetic Kalinsky Sable round brush. These are wonderful. And and I have some Faber-Castell Echo Pigment pens. These I've just recently discovered and they are awesome. They come in all of these different sizes from super tiny to a little bit bigger. So it will meet all of your needs when it comes to ink. If you like to do shading or cross hatching techniques with markers or pens, these will be your best friend. They're waterproof, they're light fast and really high quality. So we're gonna play with these today. Now to do the sketch, I know sketching is probably the most intimidating part of getting started in any project, but just take it slow. If you want to do your sketch on a scrap piece of paper first and then trace it to your watercolor paper using transfer paper or something like that. You can definitely do that and that will help avoid wrecking your paper with too much erasing if that's something you're worried about. But for me, I'm just going to go straight in with the sketch. So for the sketch, decide how big you want your little figures to be on the paper. I want them to fill up the paper quite a bit but not be overpowering on it. So something like this, I think, will leave enough room for both figures to take up the whole space without being too big. So you can see it kind of makes this L shape, the shape of the little boy's body. And then across from him is his bear. Look at the size of the bear's head, it's quite large. And the feet are almost touching right there in the middle of your paper. And bear is kind of slumped forward a little bit and then try to draw them both on the same plane. So this mark here is indicating where they're sitting on the board, on the bridge, wherever they're sitting in the reference photo. So there's my really rough sketch. If you see that up close, you can see I worked really lightly and it's just gesture, it's just a couple of shapes. Now we get to tighten it up. So I'm gonna do a little bit with my pencil and then the rest I'm gonna do with my pen, which will be really fun. We'll go in with the pen, add some shadow tones, and then we'll go in with our paint and really finish it off with some fun colors. So first off, let's go ahead and tighten up the shapes. Here's the collar of the boy's shirt. And I'm looking at the shape of the white, of the light striped white shirt. It curves down and back. Don't worry about the wrinkles too much yet. Just get the big shapes. It curves up where his little thigh comes up and then we see the separation of arm and back right about here. So a dark crease right there and we see a crease where the shirt is kind of pulling as he's leaning forward, doing whatever it is he's doing, being a curious little baby. And then the leg and the knee come forward right about there. Look at how far the foot is from the elbow. Check your distances, compare measurements. How far is this from that? We're constantly asking ourselves these questions as we sketch. Try to make one mark that's correct and base all of your subsequent marks on that first correct decision. Easier said than done, right? Okay, so there I've got his little pant leg shape. Pretty good. And we can always erase any excess pencil marks once we've done the pen. That's the nice thing about doing the pen. You can just really get rid of all your pencil marks afterwards. All right, so he's got some wispy hair and we don't see much of his face. His ear is right here next to his shoulder. We can see that. And then a little bit of his cheek and eye is about all we can make out of his facial features. Really not much visible because he's turning away from us. So that's about it for his head. You know, we can add some more details with the hair using our pen and our, our paints. A little bit of the collar right here. Okay, so that's it. That's all I'm gonna do for pencil for the baby. And then we've got our bear. Okay, so the bear is quite large, quite floofy. The nice thing about drawing a bear is that it's very forgiving. You can 
mess up, so to speak, or change the shapes however you want. And as long as it looks like a plush little toy, it doesn't matter if it's exactly like the photo or not. It's going to get the point across, right? What we are portraying here is the wonder of childhood and the companionship of imaginary friends the beauty of imagination. It's really whatever storyline you want to make it. All right, so we got our little foot of the bear curves down. Look at the shape between the muzzle of the bear and the feet. That's kind of what I'm sketching. I'm not usually just sketching the feet. I'm also looking at the negative space in between. And if that shape looks correct, then I know I'm on the right track. There's the nose. We can kind of barely make out the eye. You can exaggerate a little if you want it to be more prominent in your painting. There we go, there's our sketch. So now we get to do the fun part, and this is adding our ink. I'm gonna start with my largest pen. I'm gonna use a 0.6, and you can see the tip is quite thick on that one. So from here, let's see how that looks on our paper. Yeah, it's quite nice. I'm just gonna go over my pencil marks, and at this point, you can start to correct your lines too. If you felt like maybe any of your marks with your pencil we're not quite right or sort of rushed. Now you get to slow down, take your time, and make it exactly how you want to make it. I love this step of the process when I'm doing ink over pencil because the ink is permanent, so you really want to take your time and go slow and make sure that your drawing is really spot on. So there's a little curve in the sleeve right here. It flares out, comes down, and then the wrinkle in the shirt so I'm trying to really study my reference photo and see where all those little wrinkles happen because they're so interesting and I think really add to the character of the shirt and of the gesture, the, the leaning, the striving, the looking of this little boy. It's just really intently focused on something right in front of him. It's part of the mystery and the beauty of this image. What is he looking at? What, he's, what is he so focused on? Leave the viewer to imagine what the story is. That's the joy of art. But I think art is extra amazing when there's some sort of narrative aspect to it. So I'm going over my pencil lines right now. I haven't added a whole lot of additional markings. I might add a couple wrinkles here and there. The pants are quite dark. I don't want to see too deeply into the shadows. I'm going to focus on just getting the colors in and simplifying wherever possible. And we can certainly simplify in those jeans. Now, this is your opportunity to add a little bit of cross-hatching, to have some fun with your ink, and this can help start to darken up certain areas of the drawing and the painting. So for example, here in the hair, I can add some textured strokes, suggesting how the hair is laying, how it's flowing, how long the hair is. All of these marks are describing all of those different things. Um, adding some more hair to the top of the head. And now on the face, you can see just a little hint of the eye. I want to make sure I get the drawing correct here so he doesn't look disproportionate or anything like that. And there isn't much that we can see, but what we can see, let's make it right. So I'm going to do a tiny bit of cross hatching right here in the face just to darken up. And we'll add some skin tones with our paint, but for now, I think that helps. We can really see that that's the temple. This is his hair, that's his eye. You can even add a little bit of an eyelash if you want. Now that that's blocked in, let's add our bear. All right, time to outline our little bear. What I'm gonna do is just kind of outline my pencils and then I'll start adding some cross hatching after I've erased my pencil lines because I can see there's some smudging and smearing going on and I just kind of want to get rid of all of that. So here's his little ear, got some fluff along the back of the bear, and you can really see how I'm using the ink to just clarify my drawing and bring it to a more finished look. The pencil was a good start, but this is just pulling it together, right? And we see lots of shadows on both the baby, but especially on the bear. So this will be a fun opportunity to use our pen to add those shadows before we color in with our washes. Okay, so with that done, I'm going to grab my eraser, get rid of all my pencil lines, just clean it right up. 
And then we have a really crisp, clean pen outline ready to color in. Love it. So at this point, I'm going to switch to a smaller size now. I'm going to go down to the 0.3 size and add a little bit of shading using a cross hatching technique. So we'll start with the bear over here on his foot. There's definitely some dark shadows here at the bottom. And I'm making my cross hatching a little bit more curvy just because I want to simulate that curly plush of the bear. So cross hatching, if you're not familiar with the term, is just when you lay down some parallel lines and then you lay down some lines over the top going the opposite direction. You can see how it creates this almost tic-tac-toe look. And that is a classic way to apply shading using pencil or pen especially. And it's an easy way to kind of color in a large area and make it look really neat and illustrative without just scribbling all over the place. And it also helps you control how dark or how light your shadow is because you can either spread your cross hatching further apart for lighter shadows or put them more tightly knit closer together for darker shadows. You can also layer more and more on the top to make it go darker. It's all different ways to do it. But now we can clearly see there's a shadow side on our bear, all thanks to just a few extra pen marks indicating some shadows. We're going to put a shadow underneath his head. And your cross hatching doesn't have to all be cross hatching necessarily. You can put down little parallel marks like this. It doesn't have to be layered. In fact, that'll help it look more in the light, a little sparser, but it'll still add some texture. So we're getting a sense of that plush fur. And you can see it really clearly on the arm. There's kind of one of these little layers of plush, a little more patterned looking almost. We don't want to make it look too patterned, but again, we're just trying to add some texture to our pen drawing. The head right here is quite a bit in the shadow. So I'm going to do some cross hatching. I like to work fairly quickly when I'm cross hatching, keeping it loose and illustrative, not taking it too seriously. Just having fun with the mark making. And these pens are such a delight. They just glide across the paper. So I highly recommend if you're in the market for a nice waterproof pen, these Faber-Castell ones are just awesome. So there we've got some texture on bear. Let's go ahead and add some shadows to our little boy. And then we can do the fun, fun, fun part, which is adding color. That's my favorite part anyway. Okay, so adding a little bit of shadow as the shirt turns towards the shadow underneath his arm here. And then a couple more wrinkles that I may have missed earlier. Shadow on his arm. And it's so cute where it's tucked in. It's obviously wearing a onesie or something that was tucked into those pants. Now for the pants, which are going to be a solid mass of dark, I'm just going to go ahead and do some very large cross hatching, leaving his sock untouched. And like I said, we'll be adding paint. So that's really going to be, do, be doing the heavy lifting when it comes to darkening the whole thing. But that at least gets us started. And then for the ground, I'm just going to add a couple of horizontal lines suggesting some sort of surface that he's sitting on. You do not need to draw the bridge or articulate the background or any of that. Simple is sometimes better. So a couple more little marks showing the wrinkles. I see kind of this shape where it's dipping in a little bit. So whenever you see the shirt kind of dipping in, add some dark marks, but not too dark. That's why I'm using my thinner little pen. I just don't want to go overboard with these. Simple is better. Okay, awesome. We're ready for some color. I'm going to grab my Trickel size eight round brush dip it in the water and I have a damp sponge. Most of the water has been squeezed out of it, but it's still wet and I'm going to use that to control my water, but we're just going to be painting right on the dry surface for the most part. And for the shirt, I'm going to use ultramarine blue. Any brand will work. Mine is Daniel Smith. Mixing in some water. So I have a watery mix, fairly light, and I'm going to just wash this over, not the entire shirt, but a good bit of it. I'm going to watch out for areas like along the sleeve here 
that are in the light. And I'm going to leave the white of the paper to represent those light areas. If my paint is too watery, I can remove some on the sponge. Now this little streak here, this curve in the shirt, there's a good example of something that I can leave the white of the paper on to show how it's rising up and catching the light. So some of these wrinkles leave the white of the paper to show where there are peaks and valleys in the wrinkles, really. It's almost like painting tiny little mountains. I want them to read as having depth and dimension. And if you don't have whites or lights next to darks, it's just going to look flat. So we want it to look dimensional. And you don't have to make it a perfect copy of the photo. This is, after all, an illustration. But just leave some lights within the shirt like that. All right. I'm going to add a little bit of blue over his toe. Now for the pants, let's go dark. This is Daniel Smith Indigo. You could also use Payne's Gray, but I think Indigo and almost any brand will work just fine. And I'm going to start with some water mixed in so it's not full blast dark, dark, dark. But I'm going to go ahead and paint that over the pants. Pretty much covering up the whole thing. You'll see a little bit of your cross hatching underneath your paint. If you're working with transparent or semi transparent paints like I am here, it's part of the beauty of this technique is that you can see your pen underneath. That's why it's important. The pen step is probably the most important step when you're doing ink and wash like this. I'm going to drop that in a little bit on the sleeve to add some shadows, even deeper shadows in his shirt really strengthening the look of that crease in his shirt. I like that. Next, we're gonna move on to the skin tone and there's not a whole lot of skin. For the skin, I'm just gonna use a light wash of burnt sienna, really, really light. We can cover this across the whole head for now. If it looks too dark, just remember watercolor dries lighter. But if you have something close to what you're seeing here, you're on the right track and just color that in quickly. leaving a strip of light along the front to kind of match where the light is along the front of his shirt as well. Now for the hair, I'm going to grab a tiny bit of that indigo. So I'm going to mix my burnt sienna with a little of that indigo, creating almost a chocolatey brown. And now we're going to darken the hair, dropping that in as a second layer over the top of what we've already done. Moving our brush in the direction the hair is growing using a really, really light feathering motion ever so gently. And I'm going to pull that along the side of his face into the temple a bit. Remove some so I have a lighter value and then continue to work my way towards the top of the head using that feathering motion. Now the ears are one of those points on a face where if you add just a pop of warmth it really comes to life. So I'm going to take a little hint of Scarlet Lake, this is my warm red. Swirl it with some of the water that's in my brush already and go over the ear very lightly and over the cheek as well. And instantly that adds just a little bit of warmth and life to the boy's skin. All right, so if you wanna go even darker with the hair, mix up some more dark, like indigo or Payne's Gray with your burnt sienna for a darker brown. And you can even add a third layer, especially here at the base of the head, close to the neck. And that's just going to help it look even more 3D. All right, I'm loving that. So cute. So let's leave him alone and come over to our bear. And for our bear, I'm going to start with a light wash of yellow ochre. I'm even just going to swirl it with this mess of <laughs> other colors I already have here. You can always work with your mud. Just, just reuse it. Okay, and then I'm going to go over the entire bear with a light value, not too dark. It's easy to go too dark too soon. Try not to do that. And on the back of the arm, leave a little bit of white. And on the back body too, like on the little tail right there, leave a bit of the white of the paper showing. Try not to have any puddles at this point because we want to go over fairly quickly the wash with a second layer, wet into wet, so now I'm going to grab burnt sienna 
and I need to have a creamier consistency in my brush, not so watery, especially since this is still damp. That's always something to take into consideration when you're dropping a color into a wet color. So look how creamy that is. It's almost thick. And it's a dark mix of burnt sienna mostly and a little bit of indigo. And I'm going to drop that in to the shadow side of our bear's head all the way up to that nose. And I'm going to let the tip of my brush create some texture along the edge where the shadow meets the light. So you can kind of let your brush just dance, creating a little bit of that squiggly motion so it looks like curly plush fur on the bear. Painting that all the way down into the body. And this arm is mostly in the light. Now I'm going to remove some from my brush and kind of soften that transition with a lighter value. Notice how I draw it on my sponge first before going in. That's so important. Okay, so we didn't do much, did we? But it still looks plush and textured and soft. Next, let's take some of that tan that we used for our bear, make it slightly darker, and you can mix even a little bit of your indigo or ultramarine into that to create almost a grayish tan. And we're going to paint some ground underneath our little guys here. Just horizontal streaky motion of the brush. Oops, and if you end up with a little blot of paint on your paper, it's very easy to fix that. Just take some clean water. I have a second jar right here with clean water. Rewet the surface of the paper, and you can literally just scrub that right off. Almost to disappearing. Yeah. Now, for some fun color pops for a little illustration, I'm going to go ahead and add some green in the background. I'm going to keep it earthy, so I'm going to mix yellow ochre with my ultramarine, sticking with colors we've already been using for this neat earthy green. Mixing in some water, and you can tilt it upside down just to get a better angle. I'm going to take some of that green, dip in the water for an extra loose watery look here, and carefully paint it on my little figures. But I need that water so that no hard edges form just yet. Working my way around their little heads. Once you've done that, you can flip it back around, rinse, and then just kind of soften by scrubbing your brush around, creating some texture. You can bring that color around to the outside of the bear and the outside of the baby too if you want. I like to rinse and remove and then just kind of scumble my brush along that edge for a really loose finishing touch. Now if it's forming weird streaks, just go ahead and kind of smooth it out with your brush. You can mess with it. That's all right. There we go. There's our finished pen and wash baby and his bear. Friends, thank you so much for painting with me today. If you enjoyed this style of instruction, there are so many more tutorials like this available through my Watercolor Mastery membership. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.